Welcome everyone, Kostin here with a discussion about Total War, Warhammer 3, Immortal Empires. And where we go from now, where does the series go go from now? I think what has been proven without a shadow of a doubt with Shadows of Change is that Creative Assembly is at their best when they're under pressure from the community. Like Rome 2 comes out, it's a mess, Creative Assembly improves it. They improve with Attila. They make a vast improvement compared to previous games with engine, with combat in general, with Warhammer 1, after a significant controversy. That is, I think, the essence of Creative Assembly. And many companies as well. It's not Creative Assembly in isolation, but especially Creative Assembly. I think uh, they've proven themselves to be reliable only when under pressure. And they've proven themselves willing and quite able of getting of trying to get away with doing a lot of terrible things or really bad business practices and bad decisions when people like what they're doing. And that is a problem, of course. Now, sure, we had the controversy of Realms of Chaos, we had some improvements, but we did also have developments in that respect. But then Immortal Empires comes out where all very happy when it originally came out. Sure, there was a lot of negativity as well, but overall I'd say the perception of the community with Immortal Empires on launch was far more positive than negative. I think it's a sad state of affairs when it has to take a really bad decision and a bad DLC for the company to pot potentially change what they're doing. Because they've already released two hotfix patches and 4.1 might be coming out and it seems that they're trying to tackle the issues they've created instead of waiting for months and months to fix them. So Creative Assembly is one of those companies that will try and get away, uh, will try and get away with having a smaller development team, raising prices if you let them. Now, where do I stand on this as a content creator? Because there's also been a lot of controversy with regards to content creators. That there's people on Reddit, certain YouTubers, people accusing uh, content creators, certain content creators about how they've covered things in Total War, how they've covered this DLC. Well, that's a bit of a mixed bag. There are people. There's a blacklist, if you will, of on Reddit, for instance, of people who had pre-order links of Shadows of Change on, you know, third-party websites or something along those lines. Now, I I personally don't much care for such lists. Uh, I don't care for the idea that oh, just because someone had the discount link, that might they might get a referral link. They they're obviously just being shells or sellouts for Creative Assembly. Though at the same time, I could also agree with the sentiment that certain content creators are absolutely sellouts or they're unwilling to talk about negativity. One of the things I first noticed when I was content creator for World of Warcraft and I was part of content creator communities, I talked to people, is there were some people that were willing to talk about issues, real issues with the games and all that. And then there were people who were whose mentality was that they wanted to be as nice as possible, never really dive into deep. And the sad reality is those people, it's not that Blizzard or Creative Assembly were rewarding these people or have been rewarding such people. It's more so people also reward those those kind of content creators. Like that that's a problem. Like that's the fundamental aspect. It's easy to complain about YouTubers being sellouts, but when it makes you more money, guess what? That's those are the kind of people that are going to rise to the top, because you can't believe the number of people who just come to my videos and say, "Oh, I never want I, I, you're too negative or you're talking about the issues." It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. I might add, it's like the objective facts about that don't matter. But there's a lot of people that just like they don't want to hear any negativity. So you create a situation where a lot of content creators, especially those at top. The ones that, are get, that have the most access, the ones that get the most views, the ones that get the biggest streams, they're just um, they're, they're just basically selling themselves out, or they're saying things to that people want to hear. Can be negative, can be positive, depends on the context. But in general, when you're covering a game, you ultimately want to appeal to the people that are playing that game, not the people who are frustrated and quit. That can work in 
the short term, but it's going to cause issues in the long term. So you never want to dive too deep into a controversy because of that, regardless of how big or how small it is. And that's how you get a bunch of these YouTubers who never talk about the issues until something blows up and then they're forced to talk about it and then they're being very defensive with regards to it. Like one of the questions I would have, and I've even asked some content creators, some of the bigger ones, right, that have that uh, exclusive content creator access to Total War because there's different tiers. I'm part of the content creator program for Total War, but I'm not at the highest tier. And I've asked some people and like, how could you not see this coming? Like, there's people that say that, oh, it's Creative Assembly statement and that hurt us. I'm like, you had access to the DLC before that statement. You're playing it and you didn't realize that people might end up getting pissed off over, say, the lack of key slave changes or Kairos changes. Now, I'll be fair and say that not every YouTuber gives a damn about every single issue in the game. Some people care about Vals, some people care about lore, some people care about units. I care a lot about campaign mechanics. I care a lot about campaign balance and flow and design, if you will. But how could a content creator load up the DLC pre-release and I realized that they were going to get a thunderstorm heading their way the moment people realized that Great Assembly had basically changed nothing for Kislev or, or Tsinch. How could they not realize that? Or that even the Kafan changes are, were relatively minor. And certainly not on the scale that any of these races deserve, especially Kairos and Kislev. Because like what happened... Cause what ended up happening is not just like, oh, Creative Assembly raised the price and they released a statement. No, Creative Assembly raised the price released a statement that blew everything up, but also people, content creators started posting footage of the DLC and people quickly realized how little Creative Assembly had done, how little things they had fixed, how little racial changes were in the DLC. And that's when things really blew up out of proportion. It was the combination of factors. And I just have to say it bluntly, if you as a content creator had access to the Shadows of Change DLC and you didn't realize that this was going to happen, then maybe you should reevaluate how the hell you're doing things because uh, uh, because if you didn't, if you weren't pissed off yourself over what was in the CLC, if you think this was fine, then that is a problem. And even if you thought it was okay and it was not going to be, it's not as big of an issue as other people believed, you had to realize, because as content creator, you have to be as content creator, you have to be in line. You have to understand what people are interested in, how people think. If you can't understand, like a lot of people are going to be pissed off because of the price increase, combined with the lack of changes, then what world are you living on? So that's one thing I want to mention. Now, with regards to Creative Assembly, here's what I think they need to do going forward with future DLCs. One, they need to update the game more frequently. I understand the mod situation. I understand can break mods. That's a cheap excuse. Like, as many issues as it's going to create for certain mods, especially the ones that are not updated as much or the massive overhauls like SFO or Nagash, etc., is not a justification for Creative Assembly to sit on its ass for months and months on end not fixing major issues that, by the way, are fixed in community mods. And mind you, a lot of the issues that the game has are not the kind of issues that would break the game, like under, uh, would break the game for mods. I understand that some mods would be affected, but there are plenty of mods that I've had that haven't been updated in a long time and still work with all the major updates. Now, I'm not using major overhauls like SFO, but I do use things like a, that affect devotion. I use things that affect um, that, that affect public order. I use the warband upgrade system. There are there are things that Creative Assembly should fix that have been plaguing the game for a very long time that they haven't done. So so more frequent updates, far more frequent updates are required. And I think like it is the situation where you see Larian come out of Baldur's Gate 3 and you see the level of effort they put in that game, the love, care, dedication they put in that game. You see a company trying hard, pushing limits and you see a company that the other developers are criticizing because, oh, it's an unrealistic perspective. I'm sorry, Larian is not. Maybe at this point you could consider it a AAA developer, but Larian has not been a AAA developer. It certainly doesn't have the resources of a company like Sega or Blizzard or anything like that. If we can't accept that as a standard or even better, yes, even higher than that, what the hell are we doing? Because it's easy to complain about oh, games are becoming shittier, but if 
people just continue defending shitty and shitty games that were less effort is put in, then that's what we're going to get ultimately. And yes, creative assembly needs to do better. I've had that opinion for a very long time. And, you know, looking back Warhammer 2, the cinematics of Warhammer 2, like the effort they put in that compared to Warhammer 3, and they should put in more effort in the story, in the in, in, uh, in the map, in the objectives, in the races, in the campaigns than they have put so far. And that's not what we're getting. We're getting less effort because Creative Assembly wants to spend a lot of money on hyenas, for instance. And with regards to Thrones of Decay, the big DLC that's going to come out, what Creative Assembly needs to do is major racial overhauls for all three races as part of that DLC. Like anything less, and it's just going to be a slap across the face. I'm not saying I expect it. I've had my doubts about it. Suffice to say, I'm not necessarily surprised about Shadow of the Change, because expecting them to major uh, to do major reworks for three different races in one DLC is probably a or, uh, tall order. But what we got was far less. Now, some people that that want to defend Creative Assembly are going to be like, oh, they promised racial updates, not reworks. I'm like... Every DLC for almost half a decade that they've released, with the exception of the race packs, has included at least one major racial rework. Not two or three, sure, I'll accept that, but at least one. And improvements across the board. You have to go back, again, half a decade to see anything comparing to what they did with uh, shadows, with shadows of change, that's how bad it is as a DLC. So they need to do better, especially because of the empire. If they don't fix the empire, if they don't improve the empire and dwarves, which are two of the most popular races in the game, the controversy they're seeing right now is going to be nothing compared to what's going to happen in the future. That's my perspective on this. Costine signing out. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications.